Ciao a tutti e benvenuti, mi sentite? Come state? How is everybody? We get started in a second. Just in case you don't know, my name is Manu and I am your Italian tutor online on YouTube on Italy Made Easy and so today is a beginner lesson Q&A. That means that you ask me your questions and I help you with the basic stuff because you probably just got started. So, I think you can all hear me, which is good. I'm starting to read the questions. Now the questions are coming in and you will see them over there as we progress. But uh, before we do that, are we ready? Pronti? Okay, there's 40 people watching this, so that's great. So I'm going to show the chat over there and we can start. Okay, who's got the first question? Now, I have to be mean when I do this because if it's a beginner lesson, I can only answer questions that I think a beginner should be asking. So if your question is a little bit too advanced, I might ask you to come back when we do this for beginner or for intermediate or advanced students. Okay. Now, if you're having connection problems, this is like a normal YouTube video. So if you go to the little cogwheel at the bottom right, you can set the quality of the video to something lower and you should be able to still see the stream, you know, not in good quality, but you'll be able to still hear it, watch it, whatever. Okay, so, question, question, question. The first one, Manu, I've been following up and understand most of what Italians say, which is great, but I find it difficult to respond as I always stands up to speak. That's totally normal. We all do that with a new language. I might recommend a video. Uh, which one is it? Because I have talked about this, how to overcome. Okay, it's called the fear, um, something about uh, the fear of speaking. Look it up. It's a, I think it's an Ask Manu Italiano video. If somebody can find it and pop the link in the chat, that'd be awesome. But yeah, it's a video called something something fear of speaking Italian and I go over a lot of tips on how to avoid that. It's, it's not something that we can really, really avoid because we get scared. I mean, we're grown-ups. Children don't care, we do. So watch that video and if you still have questions, come back. Okay. Oh, da, 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 da. Hold on, hold on. I was wondering, does the infinity form of the verb come just after modal verbs like potere, volere, and dovere, or are there some other cases? Yeah, okay, so what, I missed the name of who's asking, and I missed the other one before as well, sorry. <laughs> so let's have a look at that. So what you're saying is that we use the infinitive after verbs like volere, wanting, so a sentence would be voglio, Mangiare. I want to eat. So it works the same as English. In English you say I want to eat, she wants to eat. So we conjugate the first verb to want and we don't conjugate the second verb. So for example, vuoi mangiare? Question mark would mean do you want to eat? So vogliamo mangiare, if I could spell, is we want to eat. Okay. So that's what you're talking about. So yes, we put the infinitive after the modal verbs. Are there other cases when we do that? Yes, we do. But it's the same as English, for example. Okay, another verb that would do this is, in case you don't know, is the verb piacere, to like. So whenever you like a verb, then you would say, mi piace mangiare, I like to eat. Okay, so that's another case when you would have the infinitive. But for example, how about you wanted to say, so it's going to be hard to do an accent, okay. È importante parlare italiano con gli italiani. Here is another case where we have an infinitive because we have a sentence which is similar to English. It is important to speak with Italians. So here's another case and another one would be... Uh, 
like the to be or not to be kind of thing. Okay? You can say mangiare or non mangiare. That's my Shakespearean approach. Okay, I've seen a, a million questions. I don't know if I'm going to be able to catch up. If you want your, an, your question answered, I recommend that you don't type it while I'm explaining because I'll miss it. All right. Hey, ciao, Joy. Ciao, tutti. Allora. Savan. Savana, come posso migliorare la mia intonazione quando parlo? Sento. Uh, ti sembri un robot. You sound like you're a robot to yourself. Well, okay. I have a video. If I knew my videos better, but I've made so many. I do have a video on how to improve your Italian pronunciation. It's a recent video. Okay, it's got a yellow thumbnail and there's a child in it, I think. There's like a picture of a kid. But that is a really good one, if I may say so, to help you with your pronunciation and the intonation mostly, because probably you have the pronunciation, it's just the intonation. Uh, you're robotic because you're too slow. So what I would recommend is, well, speed up. That's easier said than done. But the way you speed up is often by pre-thinking your sentences. That way you can say them more quickly. But yeah, that's... It's, it's a little bit harder to give you advice if I don't hear you, but soon I will be, make it available. I will get to hear you and give you feedback. How cool is that? Bel microfono, eh? Sì, è bellissimo. Okay. Let me keep going. Love this one. What's the difference in pronunciation? Let me see if I can copy the questions and pop them here. All right. Yeah, what's the difference in pronunciation between dove and dove? You just heard it, but the first one, D-O-V-E, dove, like that, so it's do, uh, dove, the first one, that means where. So it's used in a sentence, anytime you want to say where in English, you'd say dove in Italian, for example. Dove mangiamo? Where are we eating? You can tell that I haven't had dinner yet, right? Dove mangiamo? Where are we eating? Dove andiamo? Where are we going? Dove studi? Where are you studying? So that's dove. It's called dove. Dove. The other one, if you see, it's two words. It's not one word. It's the word dove followed by the verb E, which means is. Now we're not going to say dove e because there's too many vowels, so we shorten it to dove. But because you're trying to pronounce the verb e, is, it's pronounced e as in egg. It's always an open e for, for the verb to be. So this one ends up saying dove, dove, dove. So first, two differences. In dove, the, the stress is in the do, dove. In the second one, not only are you opening the E, but you are pushing your pronunciation, your intonation towards the end. So it's dove. And that means where is it? So it's different from where, where because this one is where is it? Cool. Grazie mille. Great question. Ho una domanda per la pronuncia. Ken, sì. Allora, la differenza fra... L e R. Oops. Let me see if you can see this. Okay, la differenza fra L e R. Pollo, porro. Okay, here's the thing. Uh, for English speakers, L is similar to the English L, and the problem is usually the R because English R comes from here, it's like road, and Italian R comes from here. It's almost like R and L are similar, so Italian R is frontal, it's not from here. So that's a big difference for English speakers. Now, based on your name, you might be Japanese. So, here's a different problem, because you don't have the distinction in Japanese between these two sounds. So I have a video, it's actually available on YouTube, it's part of one of my old courses, but it is on YouTube and it's, the pr it's like two part videos, it's like 20 minutes getting you to pronounce R. It works for almost everybody. 
read the comments. People who've been trying for years, they finally get the R. So go look that video up. It's, it's an old video, so go to my channel and look uh, pronouncing Italian R or something like that. Oh, yeah. But there are different sounds. So pollo, it's l, so your tongue is against your teeth, but it's not moving. Whereas with r, it's vibrating. So if you can't do the vibration thing, that's going to be a problem. But watch that video, it surely will help. Okay. I'm not being lazy sending you to my videos, but that's why we have a, a library of 300 videos so that I can send you to. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, sorry, you can't see it. Ray of sunshine. Confused between cosa and quale. Yep. It's easy to get confused with that one, I think. Confused between cosa and quale. So cosa means what. It's used in question sentences mostly, like what are you eating, of course. <laughs> so in Italian, that would be cosa mangi. Cosa mangi, cosa studi, uh, cosa fai, what are you doing, what are you studying? So that's the idea. It means what. A, a replacement for cosa could be che cosa or even just che. So whenever you're asking what plus a verb, you can use che, che cosa or cosa. But let's leave it to cosa because that's the one you asked. Quale means which. Okay, so, for example, if you say that you're reading a novel by Luigi Pirandello, then I might say, quale leggi? Which one are you reading? So, quale means which one, really. It's the idea of which out of a small selection. Okay, so, if the waiter brings a lot of drinks, which one is mine? It would be quale. Okay. There are times when it doesn't quite make sense in English because, for example, in, in English we say, what's your phone number? But in Italian we would say, qual è il tuo numero di telefono? Which is your phone number? I guess because we're looking at the restricted number of potential telephone numbers, I think. But that's the main difference between the two. Hope it helps. Okay. And I had another one. My question is, Will from zero to Italian be affordable? Who? Yes, Gigi. All right, where is it? Oops. I so need somebody to do these live things with me. <laughs> There's too many buttons. Okay, so if you don't know, from zero to Italian is the new course that I'm developing for you guys and it's going to be an ongoing membership, an ongoing platform, an ongoing community with weekly, daily lessons, uh, practice exercises, uh, interactive things that I haven't even mentioned to the people who know about it because it's all top secret, like a chat, there's going to be everything. So is it going to be affordable? It's going to be extremely, extremely affordable. It's going to cost less than a dollar a day and you will have access to me pretty much every day. And there's going to be a lot of content and a lot of support and blah, blah, blah. I don't want to say too much. It's, it opens in two weeks. So go and pre-sign up. Also, so I can tell you this because you guys are, are my friends, but as the as from zero to Italian grows, we know when we launch, it's going to be kind of like a work in progress. We'll build it together. So every every day, every week, you'll have new modules and new units. But some of the features will come later. I mean, I have a mobile app being developed. Yes. I have a desktop app that you can download on your computer. So some things will take a bit longer because technology takes longer. So for this reason, the initial price of From Zero to Italian is going to be just $29 a month. So that's less than a dollar a day and half the cost of one hour with a professional tutor. So that's pretty cheap. But I'll be pre-launching, I'll be offering two days before the actual launch an even better deal. So it's going to be extremely affordable. Uh, 
less than a pizza and a beer, pretty much, okay? So, okay, th thanks for the question. All right. Okay, let's do two more questions, come on. Oh, travel with Dino Boy found the video on uh, fear of speaking Italian. It's called Learn Italian, How to Avoid the Fear of Speaking Italian. It's Ask Manu Italiano, episode 20. Grazie mille. Okay. Mm -mm. Can I teach pronouns? Are, ere, nira? What do you mean? Uh, Savan, preferire è seguito da un verbo all'infinito, sì, so we can show you here, ok, so preferire is the, it's similar to piacere, so preferire, it's a, it's a strange verb because it does the isk trick, if you don't know, it's preferisco, I prefer, but then if I prefer to eat, then I would say preferisco mangiare, preferisco mangiare la verdura, Preferisco uh, studiare di sera, I prefer to study in the evening. So yes, preferire will want an infinitive afterwards. Well done. The people with the blue names are my friends. I mean, you all are my friends, but the people with the blue names have been... Uh, selected to be moderators for the chat, so they keep the chat clean and safe uh, and safe for everybody. And you know, sometimes there are stupid people that like to waste their time. So we make sure that they get kicked out and banned from the channel, so they never come back. That's what they do. Okay, I'm lo I'm looking for a question that I can answer quickly because we've been on for 18 minutes. Okay. What's the difference between ora and adesso? Not not much really. Okay. Ora e adesso. Now ora, of course, it's a noun and means hour. So, but that's not what you're talking about. Ora and adesso meaning now. They mean the same thing. I'm gonna do it now. I can say lo faccio adesso, lo faccio ora. There really really just the same meaning so no need to worry about that okay oh c'è mia sorella i can see my sister ciao federica okay come si dice il film uh, the film is based on a true story federica conferma che dico la cosa giusta il film è basato su una storia vera. I believe that's what we say. Okay, now, Travel with Dinu Boy also found the video on pronunciation that it's called Ita Learn Italian Pronunciation Lesson 13 How to Roll R in Italian Proven Exercises that Work. Grazie mille. So that is for the L and R difference. Of course, the video is not designed for the LR difference. It's more to get the R, but that could help anyway. Okay, perfetto, ragazzi. I think... Uh, Paul, if you're enrolled in any of my courses, you can't swap. This is a completely different course. It's actually, it's a membership. It's not even a course. When you buy, you actually don't get a whole thing. You just get access to an ongoing training. So it's like having me as your tutor every week I come in and I give you a bunch of, of lessons and work. So yeah, it's a totally different thing, but it's so affordable that um, you know, get in touch with support and they can help you with that anyway. Okay, perfetto ragazzi. I think I'm done for today. As you probably got it, I need to go eat. Uh, grazie mille. I will see you tomorrow. There's another scheduled lesson for tomorrow. I don't remember what it is, but you can look it up at italymedisi.com slash live and it will tell you when it is because it's scheduled and I think it's the same time as today and I don't remember the topic, but 
Grazie mille ragazzi, è sempre bello stare con voi, ci vediamo domani per un'altra lezione. Ciao a tutti, un bacione. Ciao, ciao. Ah, actually, look what I bought. Do you think this works as a subliminal message? For, not for you guys, because you are subscribed, but... Okay, <laughs> ciao ciao.